Sandra okay. Smith, uh, and our regulars to the right. Sandra, great job looking into the um, Fox News voter analysis. What are you What are you looking at? All right, a few things. We haven't really talked about fracking in Pennsylvania as we do wait on results to continue to come in there. Views on fracking. This is obviously key in this state, and we know that Kamala Harris flip flopped on this issue. And so we're looking at how voters responded to that. 62% of Pennsylvania voters say that they favor expanding fracking in that state. Those voters backed Trump by more than two to one. That was important to those voters. We'll see how that turns out. Another big difference, Michigan union voters, that vote is looking about the same with our Fox News voter analysis when we compare it to 2020. What might, might make the difference for Donald Trump in Michigan? White Catholics. Uh, really interesting. He is at 61 percent of the vote with white Catholics. Harris is at 37 percent. Trump won white Catholics by 13 points in 2020. He has run that up to 24 point wow. margin. Wow. That That's is a, a big difference major in Michigan. Major difference. That is a big difference. And you I, wonder whether she should have gone to that dinner. To the Al Smith dinner. <laughs> um, she, she may be wondering that tonight. He showed up and gave his speech, and he has had a lot of support, mostly um, based on the pro-life issue. From Well, and, and RFK Jr. was cutting ads yeah. for the Catholic vote in particular in battleground states. As far as the, yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, I think, you know, when you look at the margins, at least at this moment in Wisconsin and Michigan, yeah. I think somewhere in Florida, RFK Jr. may be breathing a sigh of relief <laughs> because um, he could have been a spoiler in those. But it, it looks, at least at this point, like the margin is big enough. I do think we have to bring up the, the youth vote again. I mean, what a difference we are seeing from four years ago. Those voters under the age of 30 going for Harris over Trump by eight points. Four years ago, they favored Biden by 25 points. I mean, this is a huge difference. And we dive in at the state level, you are seeing what a difference that makes where, where he is outperforming what we saw earlier leading into this in the polls. And how oh, crazy you... is that, that the younger candidate, you know, there was a lot of talk that a younger candidate would draw younger voters, yeah. but Joe Biden drew them in a larger numbers yeah. than she appears to have. Carl, you've been on the back end of nights like this. Uh, you have been digging into the numbers. What board do you have for us now? <laughs> there you go. Where we Same began. One. It all comes down to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania that uh, goes for Trump will settle the contest. It will be mathematically impossible for her to win. So as you looked at tonight, what did you see as it unfolded? Uh, you know, it, it, as it unfolded, a little bit changed. Earlier in the evening, it looked like he was doing slightly better in the big city urban areas. And in some suburbs, in, like in Georgia, he was not doing as well. But tonight in Pennsylvania, for example, he's doing better in all four of the southwestern, excuse me, southeastern suburban counties, as well as doing better in the, in the rural parts of the state. Uh, and it is an unusual coalition. It, uh, it's inner city ethnics, it's Catholics who have been for decades the principal swing vote in America, if you in increasingly uh, Hispanic uh, voters among them. And uh, he's knit together that coalition tonight, along with uh, working class people in small towns and rural parts of the country. If I could just add one data point from our FNVA on Pennsylvania on the white Catholics, it looks like Trump is running about one point, almost exactly the same as 2020. In fact, Trump's actually down one point with the white Catholics in Pennsylvania. So that's about the same. But union voters, he's also seeing a down arrow there, about three points. He's running down below his 2020 levels. Hmm. So uh, there's still hope for the blue wall for yeah. the Harris campaign. What are you hearing? Um, that there's still hope. Obviously, mm -hmm. I didn't love to see the go take a nap and we'll get back to you <laughs> in the morning about all of this. But we do have to keep in mind that the race in 2020 wasn't called for days, that Biden won Pennsylvania on Friday of that week and Wisconsin on Thursday, I think that it was. So we'll see. They think it's close that there's vote coming in. There was you know, some conversation over how much of the remaining vote in Philadelphia existed, and there was an extra 120,000-ish votes um, that were out there that could go into Harris's column. Two things, though, that I've been thinking about. One, and Dana knows this well, how much I love to throw out a good door-knocking stat, right? <laughs> so 2,000 door knocks a minute for the Harris campaign. Does any of that stuff matter anymore? And we'll see how this pans out. She could win with the simple route through. She already, you know, getting Nebraska second. But the Harris campaign ran a conventional campaign, right, where raising money, souls to the polls, that kind of stuff matters. 
will that be the path going forward? The second thing is, if this night doesn't end up going in Harris's direction and barring some big change, she will have underperformed Biden in 2020 in every single demographic except college-educated women. And even with college-educated women, it wasn't the overwhelming win that we thought it was going to be or that was projected in some of these very prominent surveys. And when you think about the fact that there were some people, I didn't think we were going to win Iowa, but that we had seen surveys where he was only up five in Kansas or up three in Ohio, um, it, it's going to take a lot of refocusing to understand really what happened here. And it doesn't seem like it was one decision that the Harris campaign did. I'm sure if she loses Pennsylvania, there'll be a lot of Josh Shapiro discussion. This feels much bigger than any decision about having him on the ticket or going to the Al Smith dinner. So, Carl, when Jessica just brought up a potential for 150,000 votes in Philadelphia County, I saw your head kind of swing around. Is that, does that not make sense to you? Well, no. I mean, they, they, they were, they're, we're pretty good at saying 89% of the vote is in or 95% of the vote is in, and that not turning out to be, that turns out to be accurate. It's been very rare. I can't imagine in one instance where we've said, where we've looked at a number and seen 90 percent of the vote in or 85 percent of the vote in, and that turned out to be grossly off. I, I will say this, though. I do want to follow up on one thing. Think about all that she had to face. This is an abysmal number when it comes to the approval of the sitting president. No party has elected a president when their sitting incumbent had as low a job approval as this president had. Uh, Take a look at the right direction, wrong track. I mean, two thirds of the American people say the country's going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And and she is she represents the party in power. To me, it's you know, it's it's amazing that she's come as close as she has, given the the, party, the administration. Yeah, she she was the vice president Mm -hmm. in a very unpopular administration. And and yet tonight, again, uh, Britt made the point earlier the, the Electoral College will serve the purpose of, tr- of translating a, a relatively small difference between these two people. Look at Pennsylvania, 50.9 to 48.1. And yet at the end of the day, a series of victories that are one and two and three points are going to generate a commanding number in the Electoral College that will help the new president, president again, if, the, if it all goes like it looks like it's going, to, to be more effective in office. Harold Ford, is, are there going to be Biden people that say... He could have been better. Like, you know, I I think it's I think it's hard to make that case for some of the reasons. And I think Britta and and Carl uh, have have made the point. I think three things. I listen to Sandra's data. I'm curious, as we get a day or so away from this, as we look at what happened with the performance amongst women uh, for her, did she did she win African-American women, Hispanic women, white women at a bigger rate? Was it were there disparities between the two? And then the race thing for me, I'm going to be curious also to get more. We heard that the numbers around uh, Hispanic voters, but even black voters, where that might be. And interestingly, Carl, normally you see a race where in, in a country where the cultural issues impact, as you were talking about the suburban areas in some places he wasn't performing. And you've seen the suburban areas in Pennsylvania and elsewhere where the economic issues, fracking and the livelihoods of, of, of those communities were at stake. Then you have the cultural issues. I think I think the issue the, the issue around transgender rights was a bigger issue than Democrats give it really understand what it meant I mean, what it meant for girls playing sports. I'm a father of a son and a daughter. What it means if little boys are playing and little girls sports and going into bathrooms. I don't think they ever got there. We've not gotten our head fully around that issue. Um, so it'll be a lot of reckoning and to, to Jessica's point, and I think a lot of reimagining whom we are uh, as a party, which I think will be good for the party if, if indeed the trend continues where it is this evening. I'm not going to belabor this point, but for a candidate who Democrats who really were aggressive and a media that echoed that called him racist and a Nazi. And yet today to see the black vote and the Hispanic vote going exponentially more than it did before is really quite something. I mean, it's just startling, Britt. Well, it's a further sign of the decline of the influence of the, of, of the mainstream media, uh, which tends to take its cues, to say the very least, from the Democrats and to repeat with serious faces the charges he made and the out, sometimes outlandish claims that it is made about, about Donald Trump. We could be getting ready for a call here soon. We're, gonna, we're going to um, 
stay here. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.